anti-Valkyria squad Mamlet Ape himself move. had decided before that this operation was too dangerous and avoided yes. executing it, didn't he? However, when he explained the operation to everyone, in order to no one in the unit the success of their surprise it. attack on Velgiev, they successfully they navigated took a hazard the minefield. Well. I see it. We've come out to the side of the Velgiev base. Those fools are focused only on fortifying the front. Aha! Like a delicate damsel, their flank is ripe for the taking. No sign of the snaky tank. Maybe it's our Kovaltus. No worries. If we strike here, they'll kill it. They'll turn up. Amlet? Vanergan, attack!
here is under enemy attack? How could they have bypassed our defensive line? Can it be... through the minefield? Only Vanagant could pull that off. Your Majesty, as promised, I will use myself as bait to exterminate those wolves. We march to Velgir. My unit alone will sortie. This is what makes war joy. Take a breather. Prepare for the next step. Which is intercepting the enemy unit from Cavaltus, yes? Do you suppose a Grand General will appear? Who knows? Let's just be ready for the worst case scenario. We found supplies! Thanks for waiting, everyone! Let's restock! Yo, so is it the grand opening of Bloom and Helena's Lovey Dovey store? What? Ooh, making a love nest on the battlefield. <laughs> what a couple of lovebirds. You jerk!
this one. Covaltus is still in our military's hands. So if that's how you care to see it, you should strike it as a pretext for revenge. What a petty excuse to start a war. You shouldn't have taken Miss Maria. Oh yes, I remember. Where is she? I believe you've encountered her many times. She is the Valkyria. His majesty was so elated said it was the greatest really? offering. Oh, you're not getting riled up. Whatever. Isn't that boring? I won't falter.
Captain. Amlet. Mission complete. Let's get back to base. Snow. So you still persist within this shell. You came to see me again. Do not summon me again. It is unpleasant. <laughs> what? I can hear anguish. Anguish? It comes from you. What part of me, pray tell, is suffering? Your heart. Absurd. You've carried the weight of your sins all this time. <laughs> what do you know? You should be aware of exactly what I know. I feel it was destiny that I've come in contact with you. I even wish to support your soul, which trembles with pain. What? If your pain can be eased by me doing so. What do you know? You who carries the blood of that woman. <sighs> I do not need it to be abated. Atonement is my desire, my wish, my vow. It is not pain. Absolutely not. Then allow me to continue. The day after the takeover of the logistics hub Velgev, far more snow than the past years began to blanket the Empire. The snow continues to pile up. The early winter is upon us. The loss of Victor is unfortunate indeed. We'll need to reorganize our defenses. Even if Jutland is foolish enough to attack, Winter will be our ally. Good. You always did favor the colder climes. When blanketed by winter, Ruse is the most beautiful land in the world. And the cold leaves my mind and body alert. Good fortune lies ahead. <laughs> well then, Your Majesty, I take my leave. Your Majesty. You were late. What were you doing, Maxime? I had been inspecting Victor's remains. There's no mistaking that the one who did him in was the captain of the anti-Valkyria squad, Amlet Gronker. You can tell? The state of one's mind is engraved in the swordsman's technique, the essence of their being. It was a commendable stroke. That man appears to have dispelled his doubts. And have your own doubts been relieved? <laughs> I do not know yet. However, I would like to tell your majesty of my observations here. Oh, speak then. I have been looking toward your majesty as to how a king should conduct himself. Your majesty's path of power bears the grudges born from the sacrifices made, and continues forth in their memory. I wish to serve under your majesty because I bore witness to that resolution to walk down that road. As the Emperor remains steadfast in what must be done, so too must his generals. However, I hesitated. I discovered that the people also have their lives, their businesses, and above all, the will to live. I... I cannot sacrifice such people. I have gone against Your Majesty's path of power. <laughs> of course that was the cause of your doubt. Your Majesty? It is simple. In chasing these dreams, you drifted from the servants' hall and have awoken along the way of kings. Me? A king? That's ridiculous. Your thoughts turn to your country, 
You value the people and hold lofty ideals. What else can that be called but king? <sighs> Soon enough, you shall start to dream of killing us in our sleep, just as we foresaw. That... that cannot be. We are alone now. Will you cut us down in this very room? That's impossible. I hold your majesty in the highest regard even now. My words are not false. And even if part of me has begun to think like a king, I can still walk alongside your majesty, shoulder to shoulder. Is that not true? That is false. The path of power is too narrow for an emperor and a king. <sighs> there can be but one monarch walking the road to rule. And that soul sovereign can be only me. Your Majesty. You are a capable man whose worth has been proven thus far. All we ask of you is your devoted servitude, nothing more. <laughs> Maxine, we grant you one last chance. Go to Covaltis. The snowfall will cause Jutland to panic. Thus, we foresee them attacking the fortress of Sevast. Intercept their army by preemptively striking its rear guard. Yes, sire. Give us no cause to regret our decision to appoint you here. Do not disappoint us, Maxine. <sighs> That mortal you call Amlet, what is he to you? He is one of my children. That child will stop you. Stop me. You wish to be slain by your own child? So that is your desire. <sighs> my child. Velgiev's suppression was an eye-opener for Jutland's people and became the reason for many to renew the war effort. With that, Basil negotiated with the leaders of the business world, using the scandals Freak dug up as his weapon. He made sure to end their smear campaign, since they had manipulated the public to criticize him and Solomon. Well, that's that. No hard feelings, right, boys? Either of you step out of line, I'll publish the article. Don't think this is over because we're staying quiet for now. Just remember, the moment it goes public, you'll be ruined. You'd do well not to underestimate Jutland again. Nah. Hey, hey, don't give me that look. We can still be friends. It'll be business as usual. Now that we've taken Velgiev, we're entering our most crucial stage. I knew that the cold was stronger than prior years, but I never expected the snow would pile on in this manner. Just our luck. We were banking on another month of autumn. Even the royal court is abuzz with mounting trepidation. This came as a surprise to everyone. However, if we suspend the conflict at this time, we'd be allowing the Empire to regain its strength. If they bolster their forces now, Jutland won't stand a chance come spring. We can only press onward. But how? I had always said that we must settle things before the snow falls. But that is impossible now that winter is upon us. Which is why I propose we take advantage of this adversity. Turning a negative into a positive. This year's winter is rather... Excuse me, it's abnormally early. Ruse's northern area must already be snowbound. For them, the winter is their ally. However, that arrogance should be what we target. Well, look who's letting their hair down. You used to be such a slave to schedules. Now here you are, making accommodations for Mother Nature. I suppose the princess's resolve made me adapt. Oh hey, you're back. Good evening. You seem to be fitting in nicely, Your Highness. The world powers have begun moving because we've taken Belgiev. 
They can't ignore the situation since Jutland pulled itself out of its losing streak and started winning again. Ever since that three-day negotiation with Brenland, we've been able to keep them restrained thanks to Solomon, but now that we're pushing Ruse this much, they can't completely trust us anymore. The nations of Europa can be pretty crafty when it comes to protecting themselves. I expect they'll put pressure on Jutland, too. And at the same time, they'll move against Ruse. It seems the early winter is forcing their hand. They're thinking to end this war and dismantle Ruse. Dismantle? There's movement among the superpowers, trying to blame them for Jutland's invasion. It's to make both Ruse and Jutland take responsibility for this chaos. Depending on the situation, one side will be dismantled, and the other may have an armed intervention by the superpowers. Talk about fishing in troubled waters. Then again, history is written by the victors, right? There's no doubt that this early winter is pushing different agendas all over the place. In that case, I'd like to reorganize our coming strategies. Our target is here, the Empire's Citadel of Savast. A strategic point indeed. If we take this location, the Imperial capital will lay before us. They'll be caught off guard, and we'll strike then. How about Covaltus? It depends on how Ruse will act. If they attack our troops en route, we'll counterattack. However, our main objective is to gain control of Savast as soon as possible. What about the Valkyria? It'd be bad if it showed up while we're on the move. Oh, we won't have to worry about that. As I mentioned earlier, the world powers have begun to act. And Ruse will use the Valkyria to hold them back. They'll redeploy it to Savas, though, once the assault begins. That's the likely outcome. So we have to deal with not only the Citadel, but the Valkyria as well. This won't be easy. We should try to handle them separately. The only way to do that is to take care of Savas during daylight, right? That's pretty big gambling. It'll be tough to pull off in a day. But if we're going to attack, now's the only time. Days are long since it's summer right now. In other words, there's more time before the Valkyria appears. Not to mention, Savast is much further north than Jutland. We can look forward to their days being even longer. It's not much, but it might provide the edge we need. To think the abnormal weather that's been causing so many problems will actually be of help to us. Then we should end this once and for all. Once Savast falls, the Emperor will send the Valkyria after us. We need to take the Citadel, defeat the Valkyria, then immediately march on the capital. That's our only shot. Aren't you confident? Got a plan? Yeah. We know Basil's weapons and Ophelia's song work on it. We just need one more thing to give us the advantage. And that would be? Sunlight. We need to drag the Valkyria into sunlight. Keep it busy till the sun comes out. Then, once it's weakened, finish it. Be prepared for a battle of attrition then. Yeah, but there's two problems. First, we can only fight for so long. That's why we should strike as close to dawn as we can manage. What's the other problem? How do we stop the Valkyria from running off at the first sight of light? I believe Violet and I can solve the first problem. How's that? We negotiate with the superpowers and ensure they attack the Empire on the day of the final battle. All right. I'll assemble the intel for that end. This is a big job. I'll have to use both Violet and Margarita to the fullest in order to gather that information. I'm counting on you. Both of you. We'll create a situation where they'll be forced to deploy the Valkyria away from Savast, with Violet's espionage and my negotiations. Oh, baby. Saul's plot and face is a sight for sore eyes. Why, thank you. Also, there's one more important note. This attack must be a night raid. We must attack right before the Valkyria is deployed, after all. Now that's what I call moonlighting. As for the second problem, I have an idea. I could borrow the power of the people. Of Jutland? Just so. When last I sang at the Palace Plaza, the citizens all joined in. As they sang along, I felt a white-hot energy welling up within me. I think I understand why. The Galder was becoming stronger, and the more we sang, the brighter that inner light grew. I'm sure I felt some sort of magic. Why not use that power? Let my voice carry the people's hopes and dreams. Then weaponize their strength of spirit against the Valkyria. Right, the Galder. I did sense something the last time you sang. Can't quite explain it. Of course, I have no definite proof. But the Valkyria has been averse to my singing before. Something tells me more voices might amplify that effect. Let's bank on that. Make sure the troops in the main army sing too. It's worth a try. 
nice and friendly, huh? Say, how about this? We hold Ragnite while we sing. If the pieces resonate with each other, maybe it'll amp up the mana for everyone. Hell, why not get the whole damn country in on it? We'd have us a supercharged chorus heard around the world. We carry the song to the princess across borders. Bingo! I'll pen something to compel the people to sing. A stirring call to action. It'll be my best piece yet. Oh yeah, make sure they know to hold on to Ragnite products. Mana machinery, alchemic accessories, you name it. I'll cook something up on my end too. A pendant ought to do. Just gotta get him packing Ragnite and singing at sunrise. Yeah, we can do it. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. It started back up. Huh? The Battle of Savast. For all intents and purposes, it's the decisive battle between Jutland and the Ruzi Empire. In the war's history, it's said that the Empire lost because the Emperor misjudged the deployment of the Valkyria. But once again, the traitors had been pulling strings in the background. Indeed. After adding Ophelia to their circle, the bonds among the traitors had grown even stronger. For them, they had nothing to fear. After all, they had paved the way toward a future beyond their vendetta. But where their future led was... This is a true story. It's decided then. Indeed. The rest can be handled after the war is over. For now, nothing's changed. Our liberation campaign carries on as before. We free Savas like the others. But once the war is over, I wish to return Jutland to its original independent state, thereby liberating the other nations in truth. Uh, uh, all of them? The countries that Jutland governs in the interim until they can operate normally from Ruse's colonization. You mean to return every domain to the hands of each country's people? Whoa! You sure you want to just give it all up? I do not mean to offend you, Your Highness, but I believe Jutland should continue to govern them even after the war. Liberation was nothing more than an expedient for the war. Our country is far from plentiful. As proof, our lives were impoverished just one year into the economic blockade. It's possible to annex the countries we've liberated in this war and gain enough influence to match the world powers. That's what Europa has always seen throughout its history. Your people are living the high life off the spoils of war. I mean, sure, they don't approve of everything we've done, but do you really think they'll let go of their cushy new lives that easy? Nay, which is precisely why we must relinquish our holdings. As Miss Violet mentioned, so long as Europa decries Jetland's war for liberation as naught but an invasion, it follows that we will be giving the world powers ample reason to consider armed intervention. Fair to say, and something we should certainly avoid. Nor can I condone forcefully dominating others as Ruse did. The last thing I desire is to become the next evil empire. We become the empire, huh? If you phrase it that way, we can't really object to it. I'll die before you start calling me Grand General Basil. Then let us have faith in our countrymen. Worry not. If they truly feel pride for their homeland, they'll surely come to accept it. That's a very you thing to say, Your Highness. I understand your sentiment and I personally agree with what you say. However, will the people truly meet your highness's expectations? They had easily wavered between liberation and invasion. You too must understand that risk well. True that. Even in business, there's limits to how much we can entrust in masses. Nevertheless, I choose to trust in my subjects. That trust would be nice, but not a luxury we journalists can afford. I realize it shall be difficult to do so all at once. They may be slow to accept independence at the cost of their newfound wealth, but that is why everyone needs to grow and mature. It is the first step to gradually cultivating their empathy, so they can make the right choices for themselves one day. After all, I believe in the people of Jutland. 
That means prioritizing their future autonomy over present comfort. This is my wish. I regret to say the time is not now. With our country's infancy, the people will disapprove of such a proclamation. If we're not careful, there may be riots or a civil war. At worst, it may lead to a crisis on a national scale. If we stay in control, the other world powers might step in. But if we pull out, it may upset people. Damn it! Either way we roll, we're backed into a corner. What we need is a potent cure-all. Whatever do you mean? Your Highness had once said that you do not mind bloodying your hands for your beliefs. Your speech unified the people. As with that time, the people must be moved by a powerful belief. If there is an event that acts as a potent cure-all, so to speak, I believe we can overturn the situation. Do we have something like that? Unfortunately, no. I have an idea. I am fine. I'll be alright. You chose to side with us. This is for the best. Indeed. I will stay strong. The traitors began preparing for the final battle. In order to see their plan come to fruition, they began moving in earnest, each playing their respect. At the same time, Claudius, who had predicted Jutland's movements, deployed Galouche to the Savast Citadel. Similarly, he sent Maxime to Cavaltis in order to strike the advancing Jutland army from the rear. received their anti-Valkyria equipment, which had gone through their final upgrades. The ultimate weapons to defeat the Valkyria had been completed at last. Hmm. Welcome! Have a good one. Welcome. Come again. Welcome. Come back soon. Come on in. Pretty good, yeah? How about this? 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 Pretty good, yeah? How about this? How about this? Pretty good, yeah? Pretty good, yeah? How about this? Pretty good, yeah? How about this? See ya. Yo. 